Bet First Man 2 now, live on Indiegogo. Hello, today I thought we would look at some of Dave Cockrum's work that was not Legion of Superheroes or the X-Men, which he's known for, but the Futurians, a uh, creation, uh, well, uh, characters that he created, he owns, or owned, Dave uh, unfortunately passed away years ago, um, these this is his superhero team. They're Futurians. They first came out in a Marvel graphic novel right here on the left. And then he did a volume two, which was published by Eternity. Um, this came out, the original graphic novel came out in 1983. Volume two uh, came out in, uh, let's see, 1987. Uh Let's let's take a quick look through this stuff right here. And I am your host, Andy Smith, 30-year veteran of the comic book business, uh, drawing everything for Marvel, DC, working image, acclaim, value, you name it, I've worked on it. Now I'm doing my own thing. First Man, which you saw the intro video for, please go back it. It's my creator-owned book on Indiegogo. Uh, give it a look. If you like fun superhero books, you would like First Man. All right, uh, by Dave Cockrum, lettering by Jim Novak, coloring by Patty. Patty is Dave's wife, was Dave's wife. Um, it's came out in 1983. It's, uh, it's on nice glossy paper. Gave a nice dedication there. Uh, I haven't read this in years. This coloring technique on this is what they call blue line coloring. Blue line coloring, remember this is way before computers. So what they would do is they would take their original black and white art, they would copy that or print that on acetate, clear acetate, and then they would print it in blue on Bristol. So then when you put the acetate over the blue on the Bristol, it was just black and white. But the colors would go in using whatever they wanted, watercolor, acrylics, dyes, color pencil, doesn't matter, markers color on the Bristol board over top the blue, the blue would be really faint. So then when you put the black line back over it, the blacks were still nice and rich, but you saw the nice rendered color coming through. Uh, I haven't read this in years, so I'm not even going to go into the story. Uh, I just love Dave's artwork. To me, it still holds up to this day. Um, for back then, I thought this coloring was fantastic. I still really enjoy it. But, I, you know, once again, from today's, uh, today's lens, I would like to see this stuff recolored uh, just to see how it would look by uh, a really good computer colorist today. Not knocking anything Patty did. In fact, the colors could use these as a color guide to go by. So they could still use a blue back here and give it a nice fade or whatever. They could still put these nice tones into the, the golden helmet and stuff and just use these as a color guide. That's originally what Joe Chiodo did at uh, Image. He would do these fully rendered color guides just like this and then give them to a computer separator slash colorist to go in and match in Photoshop. And then eventually the computer colorist became good enough on their own where they didn't need the color guides like this anymore. Tell me, would that not be a great Phoenix costume? And I'm willing to bet this was a version of uh, Phoenix that he did, that he, he put to the side. There's great storytelling in this stuff. He said, beautiful artwork, future dynamics. You know, I only met Dave uh, once, I believe, at a Heroes Con. Uh early 2000s maybe very nice man uh he inked this himself uh when he did stuff for the x-men when he came back to the book after john byrne left it joe rubenstein inked a bit of it i thought him and joe were the perfect pairing love these costume designs joe created a bunch of legion superhero costumes as well as, you know, the X-Men, I believe Storm and Nightcrawler were originally Legion designs he did that he scrapped. And then he, when he designed stuff for the X-Men, he brought them over, if I remember right. Uh, love these designs, though. 
just great superhero designs. Knowing you have to draw this stuff day in and day out, they're not super complicated, but they're visually stunning. This book you can still get relatively cheap. I mean, you can probably get it for 10 bucks, if not less than that. I have most of the Marvel graphic novels from back then. Uh, you know, once again, if I had the time, uh, drawing the Futurians, doing a pinup or something would be super fun to do. This gives me a real Joe Kubert vibe for some reason. Don't know why. I don't know why. But it gives me a Joe Kubert vibe. That I do know. This does too, actually, this panel, this shot right here. Really cool monster design. Get the big shot here. The Futurians. I don't know who owns the Futurians. It'd be interesting to find out. Because it would be cool to be able to do, do something with these characters again. I think, I think, darn it, that in today's day and age of comics, a book like this would sell. Could just be me. I don't know. But it's fun. It's visually impactful. Just a great book. This is one of my favorite character designs right here. This guy. His name is Werehawk. I mean, yeah, some of the names could probably be a little better, but you know, Werehawk, whatever. It's still cool. And this is why, because he turns into a hawk, like a werewolf. A man turns into a werewolf or a wolf. This dude turns into a hawk, so he's Werehawk. Uh, Dave actually, if I remember correctly, mm, Dave worked on an Avengers, was it an Avengers annual or an Avengers giant size? And there's a splash page in it. And we're looking behind uh, like Iron Man's flying into the scene, if I remember correctly. And I want to say Neil Adams inked it, inked like that one page. If I remember correctly. Uh, Dave also did an issue of Green Lantern in the 80s that I have that I really enjoy. And uh, he did some detective, was it detective or Batman? It might've just been Batman comics as well. One was inked by Don Heck. That was a nice pairing. Uh, I wanna say one was inked by, no, I don't think so. Uh, never mind. I was gonna say inked by Dick Giordano, but I'm not sure. So anyhow, this is pretty much the first F Futurians graphic novel. Boom, there he is. There they are, I mean. Look at that spread. Like I said, you can pick this up for less than 10 bucks. So uh, Future Dynamics, tomorrow is now. There's the first one. Then like I say, he did a volume two. Volume two is a little smaller in size. As you can see, it's more comic book proportion. Well, it is comic book proportion. Uh, he did not ink this one. Ra uh, Ricardo Villagran inked it. Uh, it's not on super glossy paper like that one is, which I like the more matte type paper. You know, when I first saw this, I wasn't a big fan of seeing Ricardo Villagran's inks. But the more I look at it, the more I really, really enjoy these guys working together. Uh, Patty colored this as well, his wife. Uh, the thing I like about some of these inks, like on this face right here, this face, this body, it gives me a Joe Kubert type of feel. And uh, I dig it. That face is really Kubert looking to me. I really dig this. Uh, the more I looked at it, there's the man, Reagan. Great line work here. You know, this is more flat color. It's not fully painted like the graphic novel was. And back then you would do more rendering like this to show the form. Uh, in today's day and age, some books almost look like coloring books from the standpoint of if you can imagine some of these artists that work for Marvel and DC now without any color, it would be so open like a coloring book. And you just didn't do that back then because it was flat color, so you had to indicate form. Love this dude right here. Uh, I think Dave's layouts for this one, he, he upped his game some four years later when he came back to draw this one. I need to go back and read this. That's very Qbert to me. A lot of this is I really like 
I know I've said it. I'm going to keep saying it. I really like Ricardo's inks. You can probably find this on eBay really cheap as well. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I said, I, I can't really speak on the story because I haven't read this in forever. But I can just take you through the art and uh, hopefully you'll like what you see and uh, maybe try and find this book. So, big shots, introducing characters and stuff, fun layouts, really, man, really Cubert looking the more I look at some of the rendering here. That's great. I think these were printed as single issues, but I'm not sure. But each chapter has a credit credits and that leads me to believe they were single issues first very joe kubert looking very kubert looking in the rendering not the not the camera angle and such but just the the rendering going on love this i love these character designs that's super joe kubert looking right there Classic Dave uh, shot from behind of a character flying into a scene. He did a shot like that in that Green Lantern I was mentioning. Same with that Iron Man that uh, Neil Adams inked that one figure of. See, and it says next, Web of Horror. And it starts off here. It's got all the credits. I'm thinking these were single issues. That were collected which makes me kind of want to hunt down the single issues of this stuff web of horror beautiful shot it would be fun to see this I, i'm also curious where these originals are um these are not originals that i've seen out for sale so makes me wonder where a lot of these originals are Great storytelling on this stuff. Very Joe Kubert. Man, I'm getting such a Joe Kubert vibe. Just a cleaner, a cleaner type Kubert. I mean, that looks very Kubert to me, but just a little bit cleaner. Love this tech. See, this is a panel. This panel is a great example. The tech, to me, still works for what people do today in comics. I mean, it's not as detailed, but I would love to see this one panel colored by a really good colors today. And I bet it would sing and really hold up with anything. I, I say the art in this book holds up to anything that's being published today. You know, the biggest difference is a lot of these pages have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. A lot of these pages have six panels on them, whereas in today's storytelling, they'd be three to four panel pages. But, you know, that's fine. Just opens them up for cooler stuff. Firefall, next issue. I think this was originally a four-issue series. This one, Dave did some of the inks on himself. So let me see if I can spot the pages Dave did inks on compared to uh, Ricardo. So far, it's looking like Ricardo. That looks like a dude right out of the Legion of Superheroes right there. Let's see. So far, it doesn't look like Dave Zanks. Love this shot right here. Very Neil Adams-esque. Still looks like Ricardo Zanks. This looks like Dave Zanks. This looks like Dave Zinks as well. I think these two pages were inked by Dave. Yeah, this looks like Dave Zinks to me. It's not as much feathering and rendering. This is definitely Dave Zinks because it's more solid blacks. Yeah, I think this is Dave Zinks now.
Look at that. It's like Phoenix flying into the sun. You just imagine... I would love to have asked Dave if this was a throwaway Phoenix design that he did and he just saved for himself. This is definitely Dave's ink, so. And then, uh, let's see. There's the end of it right there. Uh, let me, let's see if it says if this stuff is reprinted from an original series. Uh, no, usually it would say right here if this was like originally published as issues one through four, but it doesn't. So there you go. A uh, little trip down memory lane of uh, the fantastic Dave Cockrum creation, the Futurians. Uh, if you're, if you like uh, sci-fi type stuff, you would like these books. Uh, you can probably get them both for under 20 bucks combined. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the videos out. I will see you next time. Go back my graphic novel, First Man. You won't regret it. You'll love it. If you like fun superhero stuff like this, you'll love that book. Uh, check out this video and uh, you'll see that you'll agree. Bye, everybody. Luke Henry, after kicking Monarch's ass to the depths of space, is back on Earth. And now, he's looking to save the world from the Fourth World Foundation. Sure, he had help from Penumbra before, but she's not helping him this time. He's got to face it on his own. He's coming for a villain known as Adonis. He'll do it. He'll be there. Back it now. First Man 2. Learning Earth.